wanted to talk about one of the Alliance's most recent projects, developing a watershed management plan for the Nanticoke watershed. Um, we decided that um, with increasing development and growth pressures, that this, was, uh, this would be a really powerful tool for conservation and protection of a really beautiful resource. Um, but I'm not going to live in the technical side of things for this presentation. I'd actually like to discuss the Alliance's model for dialogue and inclusiveness and uh, tell you how we applied that to this project with, uh, with what we feel is great success. But before I do that, I wanted to give you a brief introduction to the Nanticoke watershed itself. Uh, the Nanticoke watershed spans 725,000 acres in five counties and two states. It flows from southern Kent County, Delaware to Maryland's uh, lower shore and has often been referred to as one of the most pristine rivers uh, within the Chesapeake Bay region. It has an incredibly rich ecological diversity, including one of the largest populations of bald eagles in the Northeast United States, one of the most diverse waterfowl populations in Maryland, and more rare plants than any other landscape on the eastern shore. Um, it also has several rural legacy areas in Maryland, uh, rural legacy and natural heritage areas in Maryland, and has been designated by the state of Delaware as a river of exceptional ecological and re exceptional recreational and ecological significance. It has a great deal of cultural resources as well um, and cultural history. It served as a conduit for the uh, for the Underground Railroad. It has very rich Native American history. Um, as well as maritime industries, and it was one of the one of the major voyages of John Smith. And in fact, there are several places in the Nanticoke River where you can see a landscape much as John Smith may have seen 400 years ago. So it really is a special place. But the Nanticoke Watershed Alliance is a regional cons uh, consensus building organization charged with the conservation of the natural, cultural, and recreational resources of the watershed. We are different from many watershed organizations in that we do not advocate. We act rather as an umbrella group um, and create an, an umbrella group for diverse uh, stakeholder interests, um, including industry, uh, academia, environmental advocacy organizations, and other social or community organizations. And we create a safe space for dialogue and partnership among, among these groups. We've also recently embraced a whole communities approach, which is to say, which is the idea that rather than compartmentalizing ourselves within, uh, compartmenting, compartmentalizing ourselves as a conservation organization, we must rather broaden our view, broaden our perspectives, and see ourselves as part of the bigger picture um, in terms of creating a healthy whole community. So we've really framed our conservation uh, conversations in, around the term, around the idea of quality of life. Um, this is, this makes what we're talking about very relevant to a lot of people. Quality of life is, is a universal concept that may be defined by people very differently, but are also, uh, is also very important to everyone. Um, it, and because it's important to everyone, it helps erase uh, often invisible lines that are often drawn between many different diverse perspectives and backgrounds. So how did we apply the model of the Nanticoke Watershed Alliance to this project? Well, we, we had, we, we knew in the development of the watershed management plan, we had a few uh, a few key points that we that we needed to address. Um, we wanted to use the infrastructure, the green infrastructure uh, that the state of Maryland had developed. We wanted to not just have a natural resources component. We wanted to um, put in conservation measures for the cultural and recreational resources as well. And we wanted to address Chesapeake Bay-wide TMDLs and the state implementation, watershed implementation plans, as well as address, um, in, as well as infuse 
the concept of whole communities and our model of dialogue and partnership into the project. But in uh, a brief history, the overview of this project, in the winter of 2007, we had a green infrastructure conference um, at Salisbury University. It was, I believe, a day and a half or two days of folks coming, and that was the, the purpose of that was to introduce the concepts of green infrastructure to get that terminology um, out there and grow the understanding of what exactly this was. In 2008 and 9, we, we worked for general, we applied general community outreach. We wanted to get our name out there to people perhaps who did not see themselves as environmentalists um, we, because we wanted to create that broad support, not just within the scientific community or folks that are already you know, up to speed and, and supportive of our work. We wanted to really broaden um, the knowledge of, of and, and importance of our work. So we attended a lot more community festivals, um, and, for, um, and for example, Eastern Shore um, AFRAM, or African American Heritage Festival, um, we did reach out to um, some Hispanic communities, and we really wanted to get that broad support. In the winter of 2009, we hosted a, several listening sessions where we invited a variety of public um, we have invited a lot of organizations and individuals that would sort of um, fall within that broad that would that would help us create that broad support. We brought um, we brought them to ask them questions about what was important to them in the watershed. What did they wish to protect? How would they feel if what was important to them was lost within the watershed? So again, we got a, we got a great deal of. Uh, different perspectives within those listening sessions, and all of that fed into a community visioning conference where we invited 50 to 60 individuals representing a multitude of, of backgrounds and, and perspectives to talk and develop, truly develop a vision, what they wanted to see the Nanakook watershed become in the future. So in order to do this, uh, we wanted to, we created a planning committee to, basically we wanted the planning committee to be as diverse as our audience would be. So in the committee we had farmers, watermen, environmental conservationists, historic preservationists, African American cultural groups, um, Native American representation, elected officials, real estate and youth service. And that was really just in the planning committee. So um, we were already ahead of the game for uh, getting broad support for the project, um, and really the major deliverable for that planning committee was to create an invite list, to help us make sure that we really got everyone that deserved to be there. And I do put everyone in quotes because it's impossible to reach everyone, but we did the best we could, and we did it very strategically so that we would, um, we would have that, that very diverse uh, group of individuals discussing and planning the future of the Nanakook watershed. We applied what's called the future search model, which um, helps to maximize open and honest dialogue. We, uh, we created a, in the planning committee, we created an 8 by 8 matrix of stakeholder groups. Um, public service, tourism, education, civic groups, environmental conservation, resource users, industry, agriculture, and historic slash cultural preservation. Um, as, as you, if you were to count up as I was reading, that is indeed nine, um, and that is because when we were in our planning committee, it really became impossible to try to fit everyone and every group, every voice that we wanted to have in there in eight. So we had a little bit of flexibility. We were open to the addition of, or the creation of nine groups rather than eight. Uh, because it is more important to get everyone uh, participating than to just follow the rules of the matrix. Um, but we did, we took these, uh, these categories and we very, very strategically filled those with attention to uh, geographic, generational, gender, and racial diversity. So um, it was a very good, it was a great group of folks and um, we, we were very successful in getting, um, getting a 
great conversation going and uh, with, with wonderful results. Um, the conference was a day and a half, and it was a Friday evening and Saturday day. And at the end of it all, after this great conversation, we came up with two common ground vision statements. Um, the first statement is the Nanticoke region will mindfully and intentionally conserve its natural and cultural resources in a way that enhances the unique social, economic, and environmental makeup of the area with a particular focus on the passing, on the passing of natural and cultural legacies and preserving continuity of land use in connection with cultural significance. That's a mouthful, but uh, it really got to... Um, we then took this, these statements and we really broke it down in terms of the hows. Okay, this is a broad statement, so how do we break that down and what can we, um, you know, what, what changes can we make? Um, and we came up with these five different categories for statement one. So we've got very specific recommendations on that, that de dealt with education, uh, regulations, enforcement, and government involvement, collaboration, economic development, science and technology. And statement two. The Nanticoke region will draw and retain youth and young families by providing quality jobs and job training within an economy that celebrates and preserves local identity, encourages innovation, reflects the true cost of doing business, and grows within the carrying capacity of both human and natural communities. And again, we uh, had very specific recommendations that fell into the categories of science and technology, economic development, regulations, enforcement, government involvement, civic engagement, leadership development, education, and collaboration. So, what happens after the conference? Um, because this was a very, um, very cerebral conversation, and the question is, what do we do now with this? Because our end, our end result is meant to be the watershed management plan that we can work with county governments to incorporate. So, we have a report that is available on the website that that breaks that goes into great detail about all of the results of the conference, um, including these very specific actions that that we want to uh, incorporate into the watershed management plan, and we are currently in the process of doing that. We are pulling, um, we are working with a planner to help us create a legitimate document, but that does indeed incorporate. Um, as many of these action items that the community um, suggested and recommended as possible. Uh, we want to work with EPA and other state agencies like Maryland DNR, um, the Fish and Wildlife Service, uh, DENREC, Delaware Department of Natural Resources and Environmental Control, um, to incorporate what other current plans are going on um, into this document. We are, and we will, we are planning to address TMDLs and again watershed implementation plans as well. But as we're creating, as we're going from this vision to creating the watershed management plan, we're going to continue to use the conference attendees as, um, as advisors and, and basically as making sure that what this document represents is, at, in the end, their vision as well. So we are trying to give a voice to our stakeholders throughout the entire process. Um, and then once we, once we complete the document, uh, we're going to be working with the county governments to adopt the watershed management plan. And we already have a great relationship with Wicomico County. Uh, we're, we're beginning to start conversations with, with other folks in Sussex County, Delaware, and Dorchester County, Maryland, and we feel that um, they're, they're very amenable to working with us. We're very excited about this next step. So the document is not complete, but we have really worked on creating a foundation for support. And that's really the most important thing we felt, is to create that foundation of support rather than um, sitting off somewhere and creating this watershed management plan um, and then just asking the county governments to incorporate it. 
So, the lessons learned from this project of outreach and building a whole community. Uh, reaching beyond the choir certainly takes a lot of work. That 8x8 matrix was not easy to, um, to fill with folks who might again, not consider themselves an environmentalist and therefore wonder why we wanted them to attend this conference. Um, but, it, but it did end up being extremely valuable and we have a, a, a really comprehensive document that we can pull from as we create the watershed management plan. So we're thrilled about that. And for such an inclusive and interactive process, uh, it's important to, you know, you need to be ready to change your game plan at a moment's notice. For example, um, with the, the, the matrix of invitees, um, you know, we wanted to work with the planning committee, really give them ownership to the project, so, you know, we made, we made a compromise, but we felt it was well worth it. And finally, uh, one pr primary outcome of the conference, the visioning conference, is that despite differences among really diverse stakeholders, um, that people wanted many of the same things. And sometimes that was not realized until we all sat down in the same room together. So that was a great result. And I would recommend to be ready for new, exciting, creative partnerships. Um, because all of us uh, were together um, and ready to work with one another and um, networking, we've had some really great partnerships come out of it, including uh, working with Big Brothers Big Sisters, working with Habitat for Humanity, um, working with tourism organizations. So things that we didn't necessarily consider um, outright have, um, have come out of this, this process. So we're, we're very excited about that. Um, we expect our watershed management plan to be finished um, in April of 2011. So uh, we're, we're, we look forward to, um, we look forward to really seeing all of this uh, community visioning and whole communities concepts flow into the technical side of the watershed management plan, um, including EPA's TMDLs and uh, county comprehensive plans, watershed implementation plans. We're really looking forward to producing a document that merges all of these things. We know it's challenging, but we thought that, again, it was very valuable to do. So thank you very much.